Hey guys, Jason here with the One Stop How To Guys, bringing you episode 9 of Advanced Drupal Development. Now, this episode comes courtesy of a request from Hakim Atari in the last episode, and he was asking how we can get the Add to Cart um, icon and stuff in the header of our website similar to Commerce Kickstart. Now, I have Commerce Kickstart open here, and you can see it's just this little checkout icon here. It kind of keeps track of the, the amount of items that you have in your cart and does that. Um, so that's what we're going to do in this episode. And actually, it's quite a bit simpler than you might think because Drupal Commerce already provides us with that block. So if we come into Structure Blocks and we scroll down to the bottom here to our Disabled Blocks, we should be able to find in here a cart block uh, right here, this shopping cart block. Now that is actually this block right here on the Commerce Kickstart website. So we're going to come over here and we are going to put this in the header of our website and then we're going to save that. Now there are a couple of modifications that we need to make to this block because it's going to do some really weird things. Um, now that it's on there, you can see that I have some stuff in my cart already, and you can see this is not the behavior that we want this to have, because as we come into our store, and let's say we go to the hats, and we add this hat to our cart, this box here is going to drop down with another row for our hat, and we don't want it to constantly be expanding, otherwise it's going to throw off the theming of our website. So we have to make some modifications to this, and it's really not that bad. If we come into the view, and make sure you're in your shopping cart block view, uh, there were a couple of little gear icons there. And what we want to do is come into this commerce line item item summary here. And we want to uncheck a couple of things here, and we just want to uncheck this view cart. Now this is kind of the setup that Commerce Kickstart has, and uh, if we close that down, uh, we're going to see that we're going to get a little closer to what we want. And so we're still showing these. But one of the cool things that I want to show you about Commerce Kickstart, uh, if you install it, and uh, just some of these other installation profiles, if we come over to Commerce Kickstart and we edit the view over here, we can actually kind of take a look at their setup and see what are they doing that's different from what we're doing. So if we check out the footer, we can see that we set up our footer with all the line item summary stuff exactly the same. But if we check out the fields, they only have two fields here. They have this custom text, and they also have uh, this line items referenced uh, line item ID. So if we come back over to our view and look at our view, we can see we have quite a few other items in here. So we don't we don't have the line item ID like they have. We don't have uh, this custom text. So what we need to do in order to get it to match up is just match the views up. And so let's go ahead and do that. I mean, this is, this is one of the, the reasons that Commerce Kickstart or Commerce provides the Kickstart installation is so that you can learn from it. So let's just go ahead and do that. We need the line item, item ID. And if we open that up, you can see that it's actually excluded from the display, but it's there. So let's add the line item ID and it's right here. And we also need to add a, a custom text because they're doing something kind of fun there with the custom text. Um, so the line item ID we know was excluded from the display so we're gonna go ahead and do that same thing and then we're gonna come back to this custom text here in a second. Um, and we gotta rearrange these fields because we gotta get rid of everything that isn't those two new fields. Awesome. So let's take a look back over at our Commerce Kickstart installation. And let's go to the global custom text. And we can see that there's nothing there. So what they're doing here is they're actually tricking this view into thinking that it should output something and it really doesn't. Um, so that's kind of uh, what's happening here. Uh, 
they're not actually um, using this. So what they're doing is some field has to be visible um, in order for the view to work properly. So let me show you what happens if we get rid of this custom text from the display. If we exclude that, what's going to happen here is we're going to get this validation error because there is nothing that's being displayed. So what's happening is Drupal saying, all right, you want to have this view. I require that some field is visible, period. If some field is not visible, then I'm going to break. And so what they're doing is they're using this global custom text, and they're not putting anything in it. So what it's doing is it's actually outputting nothing. But it's outputting nothing in the way that they want it to, so that all we get is the footer region which is kind of cool. And if we come up to the format and we switch that over to an unformatted list, this little table thing that we got going here is going to be gone. And our content section is going to be nothing. So if we save that, there we go. We have our checkout button. We have our total nine items, or nine items. We have our total of 174.91 and our checkout button. Now one of the things I do want you to know about this uh, particular uh, instance of this setup here is that this shopping cart icon is actually a part of the theme. So if we inspect the element on this, what we can see here is that they have used some CSS to insert this particular shopping cart icon. So for us, we're not going to be able to put that in until we actually theme up our website um, because we need CSS to do that and we're not quite there yet. So there were two things that I wanted to show you within this video. One of which is honestly just how to get this block in here and that it's already provided from us from commerce, which is a really awesome thing because we saved a lot of time not having to build that. The second thing I wanted to show you is how you can use an installation profile similar to Commerce Kickstart and use it to say, I really like how they did that. How can I make my site match what they're doing? And uh, so we were able to do that uh, and we'll probably be able to do that with some other cool things on this site. Um, within Commerce Kickstart, if you go to, uh, I think it's their to wear section, there's some really cool features uh, like within the shirts where they're not just using a select list uh, to change the colors and it doesn't look like it's actually in the shirts. Um, we got to find one. Here we go. Let's go to this hoodie. Um, where they're not using a select list to change colors, what they're using is this color selector. And that's kind of cool. Um, which is it's just a different method, but we could use the commerce installation profile to learn how to do that if we really wanted to. So just kind of dig through it and see how they're doing things. That's one of the things with learning is that it's great to have somebody teach you how to do something. It's even better to kind of dive in and see what you can figure out on your own. Um, so that's how we got our block in. In the next episode, we may actually just do that color thing because that's a really cool feature to have on our website. Um, so maybe that's what we'll do in episode 10. But uh, we accomplished what we wanted to accomplish here. Uh, thank you again for your question uh, in inspiring this. That's a really great add to our website. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Remember to like, subscribe, and follow me. And I'll see you guys later.